With the release of Episode 4, a lot has changed about several weapons since our last ranking of all of Valorant's guns. That means a new year calls for a brand new gun tier list. What is going on, Pro Guides family? It is your host, Sergeant Frost, and this is our first Episode 4 gun tier list. If you've been trying to figure out where each gun stands now based on Pro Opinions and general usability, we've got you covered. The S tier is going to consist of the very best weapons in the game. These guns are staples in the game and they have been that way for a very long time now. These are the weapons you will find yourself using the most often when you have the credits to buy them, and they will always give you a great return on your investment when you learn and master them. Starting off at the top of the S tier, we have to hand the best gun in the game to the Phantom. The Phantom has always been compared to the Vandal since the game's infant stages, but this gun takes the top spot over the Vandal for one specific reason, and that is consistency. What consistency are we talking about that separates it from the Vandal? Mainly, it's better first shot accuracy. This might not seem like a big deal to most people, but first shot accuracy can be the difference between landing a clean headshot and missing by inches in game. This small statistic is one of the biggest differences that separates the Vandal and the Phantom as competitive weapons. But what else edges out the Phantom over the Vandal? Well, the Phantom has better recoil, spread, faster fire rate, a silencer to remove tracers, a bigger magazine, and also the ability to one-shot to the head at closer ranges still. For defenders, the Phantom is almost always better because you can better choose your fights and use the Phantom to its strengths. We will admit that the Vandal's one-tapping is great and it feels really good to use in-game when your aim is on point, but the Phantom is just a better overall weapon and a more complete weapon for most situations. Even though we did rough the Vandal up a bit in our Phantom conversation, the Vandal is still the uncontested second best weapon in the game. It does lack some of the versatility that the Phantom has, and at some times it shows. For instance, if you are a more controlled, methodical aimer that likes to tap, then the Vandal is for you. If you are a fast player that likes to flick around a lot and spray a lot, the Phantom would be a much better alternative option than the Vandal for you then. The selling point for the Vandal is this gun's one-shot potential for headshots, which does give it a nice small but significant advantage over the Phantom. The Vandal's one-shot headshot range is infinite, so as long as your aim is true, you will always be able to knock their heads off. The Vandal does lack in terms of recoil control, firing speed, and it is harder to use. But the Vandal definitely has its place in many players' hearts as their favorite gun, and it can be used to great effect on larger maps such as Breeze, Icebox, and Haven in particular, where longer range gunfights and headshot angles run rampant. And of course, you also need some solid aim if you want to make the Vandal work its magic in your games. That's why we recommend you try out Aim Labs, the best free aim trainer on the market. Not only does it have pro-created playlists, it also tracks your scores and metrics to make your improvement feel more tangible. So if you haven't downloaded Aim Lab yet, make sure to click the link in the description to download it today. Closing out the S tier, we have to give the final spot to the Operator. This gun dominates games when it's put into the right hands, so it only deserves the highest appraises that the S tier will bring this gun. The Operator is without a doubt the best bolt-action rifle in Valorant currently. Once the Operator got its new price of 4,700 credits in Episode 3 last year, the Operator became a lot more popular and saw a lot more use once it became more affordable. But after it did receive some nerfs to stomp out the aggressive opping meta, this gun is more suited for defense-sided play, as that plays to its game strengths a lot more. But what really makes the Operator S tier is Jet. Her ability set is all about repositioning, and with an Operator, you're almost untradeable at times because of her dash, taking an already scary gun to new heights. Another agent that has been recently going hard with this gun is also Chamber, as he has a similar ability to reposition with the snap of a finger. Literally. At the top of the A tier, we have none other than a good old fashioned Odin. The recent Eras hype has given this gun a bit of a boost in the meta as more people are starting to use this gun in games to take part in the LMG craze. Even with the buffed fire rate to the Eras, the Odin is still significantly better than the Eras. This gun has higher damage, better range, more ammo, and it has a unique function where you can negate the gradual increase in fire rate if you fire from ADS mode instead. The Odin has a lot of benefits and positives that separate this gun from its era's counterpart. However, with good does come a little bad. Three things that do prevent this gun from getting out of hand like the era's did is the massive hits and movement speed when you have the gun out. The Odin does have quite a bit of recoil that makes it harder to control, which does steer you towards using it in ADS to compensate and the fact that this is the most expensive gun in the game second to the Operator currently at 3200 credits. This gun is a decent investment and it will hurt you over time, even if it's only 300 credits more than the Vandal or the Phantom. Ah, the Judge. This gun wrecked havoc on the game in the first half of 2021, but ever since it got nerfs, it's been relatively quiet in the meta for quite some time despite it being still a super good gun. So why is this gun still good per se, but it's not being used constantly in every game all the time? To put it short and sweet, the Judge isn't viable in all scenarios now, and you will often be screwed in a retake on most maps. Yes, we will admit that this gun eviscerates anything in the under 10 meter range. Anything beyond 15 meters, this gun is useless now. 
The main nerfs to this gun last year affected its long-range damage to stop the amount of long-range one-shots that were happening that made this gun borderline broken. But this gun still retains its good damage up close which makes it a monster to hold close corners with. Simply put, the Judge is a great gun, but like the Odin and the Operator, this gun benefits from the user being in a preset position where you can control the engagement and the engagement distance, which for this gun is really up close. This gun deserves its spot in the A tier because it's really powerful, you just need to put it in situations where it can maintain its close range. The new and improved Bulldog is much deserving of its new ranking in A tier. The Bulldog got its fire rate increased, and it got a change to its ADS 3 round bursting where it made it much more consistent to get kills with. The buffed Bulldog has made its way into the A tier mainly because its new and improved self feels a ton better than it was pre-nerf. The up rate of fire makes spraying down targets feel actually consistent, which directly helps this gun's ability to take down opponents quickly and spray more consistently. The improved stability to its burst fire ADS also makes picking people off at range a lot more viable and a lot easier to do now on this gun as well. The Bulldog is definitely worth a buy if you're in a pinch for credits and can't afford a Phantom or a Vandal, and it's also a pretty valuable second round buy now as well. Next up in the A tier, we have the god of precision guns known for its satisfying one-taps, the Sheriff. At a relatively cheap 800 credits, the Sheriff is arguably the strongest sub-1000 credit gun in the game for how powerful it is. The weakness of this gun is that it requires an exceptional amount of skill to use well, and losing composure while using this gun will screw you over very quickly. As a result of its recent movement accuracy changes in patch 3.0, the Sheriff is more like a sniper pistol now, so look to hold down more angles and avoid swinging and spamming it like Cole Cassidy's gun in Overwatch. Once you learn how to pace your shots with this gun without falling behind in a gunfight, the Sheriff will become your most reliable sidearm guaranteed, and you'll make eco rounds a nightmare for the enemy team. For everyone who freaked out at the Spectre's nerfs, don't worry, it's still an A tier gun at minimum. In patch 4.0, the Spectre got its yaw recoil adjustments nerfed, and even more importantly, it got its maximum range damage nerfed as well. A lot of players thought it was the end of the Spectre's reign as a second round buy go-to gun, but it is still usable when you use this gun for what it was designed for, which is close range combat. Although its long range capabilities are significantly worse than it was before, you realistically don't want to put yourself in those situations anyway, so it doesn't hurt to practically use it in most cases. As long as you stay away from long range spraying with this gun, the Spectre is still a more formidable weapon to use consistently to get kills with on half by rounds. Now let's move into the B tier. For the gun ranking we know you've all been waiting for, let's have a little conversation about the Ares. Some people might be yelling at their monitors that this gun should be first spot S tier, mainly because the start of episode 4 gave the Ares some monster buffs. But after the most recent hotfix last patch, this gun now has more added recoil to compensate for the buffs that it was given in patch 4.0 along with a slightly higher price tag. The Ares still has its 4.0 buffs which increased its fire rate from 10 to 13, and it still has its spin up time removed. Riot just compensated its power levels by messing with the recoil and accuracy. So did they fix the gun? Yes and no. Yes, this still is a sizable nerf that can be felt as this gun now kicks a lot harder and feels really hard to control when spraying at medium to longer ranges. But also no because this gun still has its insanely fast fire rate and it still has no spin up time which means it can shred multiple people quickly at closer distances. The Ares is not top tier by any means because its counterpart the Odin is still an objectively stronger LMG and it's also not strong enough to compete against the Phantoms and the Vandals consistently like it was able to before the hotfix. So it's not a busted force by gun anymore. But man, I still remember the first few days after episode 4 patch, it literally wouldn't matter if you won pistol round or not, because second round, both teams would have Ares plus armor running it down mid. The Marshal is sitting pretty in B tier as well, with it being a potent sniper for both force buys and anti ecos. Last year, it got a price reduction from 1100 credits to 950, and it's been popping up a lot more in the community. The Marshal is a great gun because it essentially has the same power of a Sheriff but with a scope and a nice hip fire spray as well. The gun's high movement speed and no scope accuracy makes it much more viable to go for quick peeks in hopes that you can soften up enemies for your teammates. This gun is the king against eco buys, allowing you to one shot enemies from afar and cut the attack down before they get near you. But the reason why this gun isn't up in the A tier like it was in the past is actually because the community has sort of gotten used to how strong the Marshal can be if you're not careful. And most players know how to properly play around the Marshal so that you won't be blindly feeding kills in the round. As a result, the Marshal is surprisingly tame for how scary it looked in the hands of crack players like 10 soon after its price changes. Now, it's a great gun to use when you need a range advantage, but it's not comparable to bigger and better buys on full buy rounds, especially when utility is involved. The Ghost has been the go-to gun on pistol rounds since the game's release, and not much has changed since then in regards to the gun's priority in the meta. 
It is a reliable weapon that can land one-shot headshots on unarmored targets at range. And when you learn how to not spam it, you can land enough shots to put your enemies down relatively quickly. If we're being honest, I don't see the Ghost being bought that often outside of the initial pistol rounds. If you're going to upgrade your classic, you may as well buy the Frenzy or the Sheriff. The Ghost has its uses, but some agents specifically benefit from keeping their classic and buying armor and abilities. This gun is a situational buy depending on what agent you're playing, and it's rarely a gun pulled out on rounds outside of the pistol round. The Guardian got a minor buff to start the new year to how its fire rate works when in ADS mode. This made the gun a bit smoother to shoot when you are using aim down sights, which you will find yourself doing often when using this gun. But outside of that minute buff, the Guardian is not worth the buy when you can instead go for a Bulldog if you're short on credits. The range this gun aims to compete against is with the Vandal, Phantom, and Operator. With the gun's low fire rate and high recoil, it's often going to lose unless the user is in a significantly better position or really hits a good shot. As such, it's a high-risk medium reward gun because it doesn't have the potential to take over a round, but it is definitely strong enough to make an impact in a dueling situation. Overall though, it's not very reliable and we don't recommend you use this gun unless you feel particularly crispy and you're using an agent with escapes like Jet or Chamber. The Frenzy has all but disappeared from the meta ever since it got nerfed earlier last year. It can be used as an alternative to the Ghost for agents that would upgrade their guns on pistol rounds. But in reality, if you have a good aim, the Ghost one-tap potential is much better than the Frenzy's running gun potential. It's still a very powerful gun, but it is a little more niche and harder to find consistent value with now. Some duels prefer to run this since it definitely has got its advantages at closer ranges. But in general, this gun has very limited uses and you rarely see it on pistol rounds, let alone eco rounds. Do you guys remember the Stinger Madness that took place in Episode 2 last year? It's been an entire year since then, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. This gun never regained its popularity after its nerfs, but it can still be used on save and eco rounds from time to time. Its blazingly high rate of fire can help you secure quick kills when you manage to close the distance on enemies. The burst fire option is pretty good with some practice, but it honestly isn't worthwhile to practice using this gun with for that specific purpose since there are better buys for this price, like a Marshal or a Sheriff for example. And now closing it out with the S tier, just like the Stinger, the Bucky never fully recovered from its fall from grace after it got hit with some substantial nerfs last year. The right click function made the Bucky worth using since it could secure kills at medium to almost long-ish ranges. This made the Bucky a menace for quite some time because its cheap price and high damage made this thing a force to be reckoned with on smaller maps where its range could be abused. However, the Bucky has never fully recovered from its nerfs and it has not been seen a lot through the community as a result, which is why it landed in the F tier. Do I even need to explain that this gun was only somewhat useful in Episode 1 when Jet abused its range? And I guess some people cheese with it up close with Yoru. Since then, this gun has just not been very useful at all, especially since people know how to play around it. You can stick with the classic and it will provide you with much more value and kill potential, plus it's free. You can still run the shorty if you know people will run into you close range, but anything past barrel stuff range you're basically a walking free kill. Well everyone, that's all we have for this gun tier list. If you liked the video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com for some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you all again in the next video.